Up the on again, off again Hoosiers were on against University of Evansville on Wednesday and came away with a big win. Brian Evans led the Hoosiers with 17 points, while Neil Reed added 14 with another fine performance. This afternoon, the DePaul's Blue Demons visit Assembly Hall led by 6'1 point guard Jermaine Watts. And the Meyer legend lives on as head coach Joey Meyer brings the Blue Demons on. Indiana, DePaul on Creative. Assembly Hall in Bloomington as the DePaul Blue Demons at 6-3, coached now by Joey Meyer, formerly his dad Ray Meyer, takes on the Indiana Hoosiers at 5-4 as they defeated Evansville on Wednesday night. Santa is here. Glad to have you with us, John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell. This will be an upbeat game. DePaul loves to get it up and down the floor. Yeah, they're going to want to get it off the board. They want to get it in their point guard's hands, and they want to run it up the court, hit the defense before it gets a chance to set up. They want to penetrate and throw it out or penetrate all the way to the basket. And time now for the Coquilin Fueling Factor. Coquilin Fueling Factor is for DePaul using their athletic ability. They're very, very quick, very fast, and they, as we mentioned in the open here, they are going to want to get the ball off the board, get it up the floor, and hit the defense before it has a chance to set up. Even though they're not very big as far as an inside game, they have got to get some production from their inside game. Bowden is a man that's averaging about 15 points a game. They've got to get some points from him inside. For Indiana, stopping conversion and penetration, we've put these two terms together because it's most important. You must stop the fast break, and then you've got to stop the point guard who wants to get inside and penetrate Indiana's defense. And the value of each possession has really been a factor for Indiana. At, the, or at Evansville this past week, they only had 11 turnovers. Let's see if they can carry it over into today. And those are the fueling factors for tonight's game. Coakley's fueling factors, their 100% guarantee of high-quality fuel. Over 57 years of family pride makes a difference. And we'll be back with the starting lineups after these messages. Tonight's Indiana basketball game is brought to you by Finish Line. For the latest in athletic shoes and clothing, head for the finish line. In the everyday world, it rains. With the world-class network from GTE, it rains too. You just don't get wet. Change the way you work. Change the way you live. It's amazing what you can do with the world-class network from GTE. Around here, people drive Ford trucks. Like the tough, dependable F-150. With a standard driver's airbag. Welded bolted cargo box. Double galvanized steel to prevent corrosion. And your choice of powerful, economical, and durable engines. No wonder F-150's been the best-selling truck 19 straight years. Ford F-150. Another reason your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. Your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. <laughs> Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. The cold one. You know the beer. You know the taste. With Miller Genuine Draft, the world's a very cool place. You don't need to tell me I work hard. I know I work hard. Farming is a hard business. You don't need to show me a picture-perfect soybean field. No field is perfect as much as I'd like them to be. 
I don't need you to tell me we've entered a new era in farming. Things change, but it's still performance that counts. What I need is a herbicide that works all season. On my toughest weeds and grasses, in one shot, in any field. Just give me what I need. Coach Bob Knight comes over to the IU bench. Let's take a look now at the Papa John's starting lineups. For DePaul, Jermaine Watts is really their man. He, they like to get it in his hands. He's one of their, their guards. The other guard is Peter Patton, while Jermaine Watts is going to dribble, penetrate, get to the basket. Patton is going to come off screens and look to shoot the jump shot. Bowden, their real man inside. It's 6'8". For Indiana, Charlie Miller, Neil Reed, Robbie Eggers. You can see Robbie Eggers comes in for Richard Mandeville who started the last game. Brian Evans and Andre Patterson look for Neil Reed to get the big assignment on Jermaine Watts. And those are the Papa John's starting lineups. It's game time and Papa John's Pizza is the perfect call. Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients and better pizza. There's Coach Joey Meyer, his 12th year. First time he's played a coach against Bob Knight and his father is on the radio broadcast. There's Ray Meyer, 42 years as the coach of the DePaul Blue Demons. We'll be back with the tip-off after these messages from your local station. Through the ages, this shape has changed the way we travel, the way we play, and now the way we watch TV. Introducing the revolutionary Z-Track remote from Zenith. Just point, spin, and click. Television has never been easier to control. Zenith advanced video imaging sets with colors more vivid and images more realistic than ever before. And now the simplicity of the new Z-Track remote. One more way Zenith is reshaping television. If you're going to be the best, you've got to be committed to excellence. And at Marsh, we've been making that commitment for over 60 years. You got to work hard on all the fundamentals because that's what's going to make you better. And we're working to give you the highest quality and the best service at great values. And when we've got the right players in the right positions, it means only one thing. A winning tradition. Marsh, an Indiana tradition. Marsh will bring a smile to anyone's face, even mine. DePaul in Indiana about ready to tip off. And before the game, Bob and I went over to see the former DePaul coach, Ray Meyer. There they are exchanging pleasantries. 42 years as a head coach at one university. Quite a record. In fact, I had a great experience in high school being recruited by Ray Meyer DePaul. But uh, they had a new coach at Indiana that year, Bob Knight, and I, I made my choice. Here's the choice for the officials. Steve Wilmer, Ted Hillary, and Tom O'Neill, all of the Big Ten Conference. DePaul comes out in their traveling blue uniforms with red trim. Indiana leads the overall series and has never been beaten by the Blue Demons here. The last two times these teams met were in 1976, so it's been quite a while. And that is the last meeting. It was in Indianapolis and a low-scoring affair. We're underway. Indiana has the tip. Neil Reed showing a lot more confidence in his offensive game in these last two ball games at the point for Indiana. Brian Evans, as he started against Evansville Wednesday night, he hits a three-pointer here to give Indiana a quick lead. DePaul is going to have to get out on Brian Evans. Indiana really looks to set screens for Evans, get him open. He will look to take the three-pointer as he did right there. Patton is 52, the shooting guard for DePaul. He takes a drive this time and switched that ball to the left hand, got the layup in. He is a natural left-handed, as their entire backcourt is left-handed. Good hands by Charlie Miller right there. Patton should have made the steal. He got his hand on him. He didn't come up with it. Miller used a height advantage that time and gives Indiana a lead by three. You can see the offense that DePaul's going to run is pretty much a three out and two in with the two big guys, Curry and Bowden, working inside. Bowden being more of the score. Curry more of the uh, man looking to set screens. Patterson with that board. Reed with a wild pass. And... Jermaine Watts leads this team in steals at over three a game, and there he comes up with his first one. Jermaine Watts leads this team in almost everything, scoring, steals, assists, and uh, he is definitely their leader on the floor. He's, he's only a sophomore, so he's got over two years left. He calls out the play now as he brings the ball across the 10-second line. Now Bowden way outside. You see Indiana starts Charlie Miller on Watts. Charlie being able to play off of Watts a little bit more and still use his height advantage in case Watts wants to go up and take the 
three-point shot. 21 is Marcus Singer. And a steal by Charlie Miller. It's one on three. Charlie Miller's shoulder looks to be fine after coming down on very hard at Evansville on Wednesday night. They said it was a little sore early, but tip in by Eggers. Neil Reed with a good drive, and Eggers right there for the tip. It's 7-2, Indiana. The call turned around. They didn't find their man first, and Robbie Eggers stuck in the, the starting lineup for the first time all year, got in there. Watts is off on that shot. Scouting report on Watts is that although he's a left-handed player, he likes to go to his right on the drive, and there you saw it as he drove the right side of the lane. Missed on that shot, out of bounds to Indiana. Exactly what the, the scouting report says. If given the opportunity, he will go right more often than left. Charlie Miller just a slight band-aid on his right shoulder. So that injury not as serious as first uh, thought in Evansville. Evans again on a three-pointer it's off and there's Watts climbing up for the board you can see how he's going to race the ball up the floor and try to get into the defense like right there you've got to stop him he wants to get into the defense you've got to back off you've really got to contain Watts he wants to get into before you have a chance to set up as he did right there wonderful offense by Watts you can see Curry looking to set the screen the man setting screens Robbie Eggers going to have to come over quicker you've got to cut him off just going up to try to block the shots not going to get it done Watts going to have an opportunity at the three-point play. And this becomes very dangerous. Uh, he, although he's left-handed and likes to go right, his natural hand is left, so obviously he can go left as well. So here's a point guard that can go both ways effectively as he hits that free throw for the three-point play. It's a two-point ball game now and some full-court pressure by two, the Blue Demons. One, two, two, trap. Try to trap you in the corner. A long, long pass by Evans across. Very fortunate to get it across. Great pass by Reed inside. Evans makes the cut inside on the reverse layup. Nine to five now. Evans has five points. Not only was it a good pass and a, and a good catch, but most importantly, they were made at the times they have to be made. Uh, Neil Reed saw him just when he broke open, gave him the ball, and he's able to catch it and lay it up. I saw a saying in the IU locker room that I hadn't seen before. It says, no pass is a good pass unless it's caught. And the words of wisdom, well, for this Indiana team. That pass was a good pass because it was caught and converted. Here's number 12, Thomas Cooper. 6'5 freshman from Gary checks in. Singer comes out of the lineup. Singer more, the guy that just uh, that came in for Singer is a three-point shooter. You can see Watts goes up, Andre Patterson up high for the rebound. Got, got Curry and Cooper, more screeners. Patterson, he posts up on both. And a quick pass to Eggers. Although Eggers was open, that pass does not connect. Andre Patterson is going to have to take advantage of his quickness inside against Bowden. Bowden much bigger, much stronger. So Andre Patterson, when he gets the ball in the post against Bowden, has got to use his quickness and get to the basket and try to draw fouls on Bowden. 9-5, Indiana leads it. 16-15 left first half. Still early going. Cross-court pass is stolen by Eggers. So each team now with two turnovers. Indiana runs the motion offense. The ball in man-to-man -man defense. Good shot fake by Neil Reed. And it got him open for 12 feet. And Reed hits the jumper. Neil Reed has shot the ball extremely well the last couple games. And you can see once again, the Paul runs the ball up the floor and gets a quick shot. Curry misses. The tip comes back out, though. Good job by Bowden of keeping the ball alive for DePaul. Mentioned the big guy needs a big game inside. And that helped give DePaul another possession. You see DePaul set a lot of cross screens and watch the guards come pop out. They, as I mentioned before, they like to play a three out, two in. Not much happening offensively right there. Watts has to go up with the long jump shot. Splits the defense, and Evans comes over to help. And it's a jump ball. Position arrow is to... The Paul, so they'll keep it. We've got timeout. It's Indiana 11 to Paul 5. We'll be back with more action after these messages. First day, my new boss throws me the keys. Get it fixed, kid. So I took it to Charlie. Guy's a real pro. Let's get the parts. Charlie says at CarQuest, they believe to be the best, you got to use the best parts, like top quality CarQuest batteries. They perform each and every time with sure starting power that won't let you down. Relax. It's done. Did you get the car fixed, kid? Um, yes, sir. Where'd you get the parts? CarQuest? 
Welcome to the pros, kid. The Snake Burger of the Future. What did you get me? 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 Gift what certificates did you get me? from Steak and Shake. Famous for steak burgers. Around here, people want a compact truck that's tough, safe, and a great value. That's why Ford Ranger is number one. Ranger comes with a more powerful base engine, standard rear anti-lock brakes, and is the first and only compact pickup to offer available dual airbags at best-in-class quality, and it's no wonder Ford Ranger's been the best-selling compact truck for nine straight years. Ford Ranger, another reason your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. Your Indiana Ford dealer's the one! By George Sennison. Tonight's Indiana basketball game is brought to you by Shelter Insurance, celebrating its 50th year of pledging to you the best in personal service and insurance protection for your life, home, car, farm, or business. Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. The ball inbounds to Watts. Take a look at the early shooting. Indiana's on fire. And they control the game by six. Paul taking a little bit more time here on this possession. Very difficult when they have to play the half-court game. Not what they're looking to do, but Pat is. What he's looking to do is come off screens as he did right there. He's an excellent three-point shooter. He was falling away that time, picked up his fifth point. That's that Indiana lead down to three. See DePaul in a two-three zone, going to make Indiana shoot from the outside. Look for Indiana to try to throw over the top of it as they did right there. And Charlie Miller going to try to knock it down. Miller follows his miss. Indiana has a new possession, nearly stolen. Reed with a quick shot. And Indiana can't come up with that rebound. Against the 2-3 zone, you're going to have to step up and hit the shots. Great catch by Curry inside. And Bowden, they're going to call goal. I think they're going to call goal 10. Maybe not. Nope, they're going to call Bowden up over the top. He doesn't argue very much about it. Maybe he had a hand in somebody's back right there. So the big fella can really get up there as he jammed that miss by Curry in. See if he picked that up. Don't get a real good look at it right there. Well, it didn't look like he was up over the back too much. Steve Wilmer made the call, but a good offensive rebound by Bowden taken away. Score stays 11-8. And DePaul stays in the zone. Good release pass that time by Evans. The read passes up on the shot. Eggers is off the backboard. Gillette 14 in the ball game. 6-8 junior. Here's a steal by Patterson. It's three on one. A little sloppy on the passing, and it's stolen as Patton sneaks in. He stepped on the out-of-bounds line, though, and Indiana gets it. Well, even if he didn't step on the out-of-bounds line, it's got to be travel. He went down on the floor, and he got back up after he had been on the floor. It's got to be a travel, so they call out-of-bounds on him first. Great hustle by Patton. 223 victories already for Joey Meyer in his 12th year. Second winningest coach in the ball history. Don't have to tell you who the first is. Patton's going to get a foul right there. He shoved Eggers as he went to the basket. Eggers trying to get off, go for the offensive rebound. And Patton, a little bit smaller, used his body and kind of shoves him out of there. Indiana having a lot of problems against this 2 3 to Paul zone. Patton didn't agree with that call, but Evans will take it out of bounds for Indiana. See if DePaul stays in a zone on the out-of-bounds play, and they do. One thing you have to do against zones, you've got to use a lot of pass fakes. Get that zone moving and a lot of shot fakes, as Neil Reed did right there. Got a hook that time as in the shot fake got him open, but he hooked with that left hand. That's a terrible tried to call. Drive. There's no way, once you get the guy up in the air, to go around him like that, that that is a hook. Now, the hook, they call down on the baseline a lot of times when you're posting up where you actually hook the guy and go around him. But that call right there, when you're facing the basket and you're going around the guy, no way are you going to hook somebody. Patterson steps out. You can see DePaul likes to set a high screen up there, a ball screen, and try to penetrate off of that. Cooper on a double team drags the pivot foot. That's traveling. Fourth turnover now for DePaul. You can see DePaul's offense is very perimeter oriented. They like to dribble around, penetrate, and then get the three-point opportunity. 
Low scoring game, 11-8. Turnover's part of that reason. A little high for both teams. You'll read for Indiana, he's got to penetrate inside. You can see Charlie Miller steps up, hits that three-pointer. He missed his first opportunity. He steps up after the, the second time, and I'm sure that right shoulder's still bothering him just a little bit. Five now for Miller as Bowden gets open and hits a jumper about 12 feet. Bowden doesn't have tremendous range, but he can step out 12 to 15 feet. After he screens, he steps out. Nice little jump shot there for him. This is a team that got down to Northwestern at Evanston last Saturday in the second half, but came back for a big win. So DePaul is a fighting team. Here's Evans. Shot fake, got him open for a jump. Indiana likes to use the shot fake. DePaul needs to stay on their feet. You can see DePaul races the ball up the floor and tries to get the defense before it's set up. Now that they're in a set, it becomes much more difficult for DePaul to try to score points. Number four, Juan Gay, known for his driving as opposed to outside shooting, and there he goes. Very quick, very offensive-minded. He comes in the game looking to score points. He is not in there to pass it around. He's not in there to play defense. He's looking to score points for DePaul. Averages 11 a game, and game is getting physical on the inside. Bowden really doing a nice job fighting for that ball this time it's out of bounds to indiana you can see it's kind of a two three matchup you can see the guards kind of match up they come down one of them takes the ball and then the other one matches up good rebound by Patton inside open shot by patterson was missed well, good shot uh, pass fake there by gillette he turns to that right shoulder and hits the jumper 16 12 now indiana by four Indiana not getting back defensively and DePaul able to set up very quickly and a nice, nice fake by Gillette down on the baseline. Good penetration there. Tries to split the guards at the point. That gets Patterson open on the baseline. Fight for the rebound goes off Gillette and Indiana retains possession. I think Coach Knight would like to see Patterson shot fake and drive around Bowden right there, Bowden, because he is looking to try to get Bowden in foul trouble. Timeout, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. There's a wonderful bedrock of strength in the citizens of the great state of Indiana, composed of connectedness, friendship, loyalty, kinship. While some might say these values are old-fashioned, Citizens Insurance holds them in high esteem. A respect for lasting relationships keeps our customers loyal and has made us financially strong, able to offer our customers home, auto, and business insurance at fair and honest prices. At Citizens, our friendship is our bond, just like the good citizens of Indiana. Need a break? Yeah! Well, come on! The Monopoly game is bigger, better, and back at McDonald's. Just order any of these McDonald's food favorites to get your game piece. Win instantly or collect and win. Cruises Dodge Vipers cash a million bucks. Wow! Sega Saturn with the Daytona USA game. With over a hundred million new prizes, this is your best holiday break ever. I won! You win! Ford Contour is a world car for your world. Contour has the safety and performance features you want, like a stylish and spacious interior, class-exclusive Micron air filtration system, standard dual airbags, available anti-lock brakes, and four-wheel independent suspension for a great ride. Ford Contour, another reason your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. Number one in America, your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. Tonight's Big Ten game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use rebroadcast or the transmission of any or all of this game without express written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. I'm going to take a look at Indiana moving the ball around. You can see they get, get it to Evans in the corner. Nice shot fake. Evans goes up and drains the jump shot. But against the zone, the corners, especially against the 2 3 zone, you've got to work the corners and the wings. But to get either one of those positions open, you've got to get some penetrations from your guards. You can see Coach Knight has moved Evans out on the wing, off of the baseline where he was before, out on the wing to get him more shot opportunity. That gets him open in the middle. He misses. Number Charlie 50. Miller with the rebound. 55 for Indiana, and now Harris Mujozinovic. Also, Sharon Wilkerson, number 20. So Bob Knight makes a couple substitutions at that timeout. Looking for his 665th career victory this afternoon. 16-12, Indiana by four. Just 
Under 11 minutes left. Gillette, a good shot fake, got him open. Patterson hauls down another rebound. And Indiana fast breaking more than we've seen him earlier in this year. Ron Wilkerson off the bench, came off the bench against Evansville the other night and had an outstanding game. Cross-court pass to Evans. Used his height to get that shot away. There's Harris with the rebound, and the big Z is going to draw the foul and go to the line. For anybody that hasn't seen Muljuzinovic play, he's kind of a garbage-type player. He's going to bang inside, he's going to get rebounds, and he's just going to continue to pound, pound, pound inside. Good shot fake by Evans getting into the defense. Nobody blocks Muljuzinovic out. You can see he goes up. A lot of ball right there. Indiana very fortunate to have an opportunity to shoot two free throws. And a big moment now for DePaul as Bowden picks up his second foul, comes to the bench. He was their strength inside. So Indiana with a decided height advantage and a bulk advantage inside while Bowden's out of it. Bojuzinovic has struggled all year at the line. There's a good look at Bowden, 17 a game. Had 23 points this week against Western Kentucky. Harris again has trouble from the line. You really got to get back. Everybody has to find Watts right away because Watts is looking to run, get all the way as far to the basket as he can and then dish off as he did right there. Well, now Meyer or uh, Charlie Miller switched back on to him. As we mentioned earlier, Charlie a little bit taller so he can use his height advantage to play a little bit off of Watts and still hopefully contain him and not let him penetrate. Indiana's had trouble scoring against this 2-3 zone. Here's Miller, another three-pointer. He's been the Indiana offense against the zone with two three-point shots. And it was excellent offense by Indiana. That's what Coach Knight's looking for. Muljuzinovic popped into the middle. He got the ball and right away threw it out to Charlie Miller, who's able to step up and take the jump shot. Against the zone, you have to have your feet set and be ready to shoot the basketball. Good pass inside as Curry was fouled on the easy layup. Evans out of position. He got behind Curry rather than in front of him. Curry, nice job of catching the basketball going up, and he got pounded pretty good by Brian Evans right there. Going to see a good pass right here. See, he likes to drive baseline. See, he gets up, excellent pass, and Evans gets caught behind, and he just sticks his knee right in there and hits him pretty hard. You get two free throws, and Curry hits the first. Harris went over to help. It's tough for that second man removed, this time it was Evans, to get back and help. And that gave Curry the shots. Pressure by DePaul, they steal it. Gets Gillette a layup. And Joey Meyer off the bench, he wants to keep that press on as Indiana now leads it by three. As DePaul hits two quick buckets. In most cases, DePaul only going to press after May free throws. Indiana has to be aware of that. I'm sure that it was in their game plan. Indiana fell asleep and because of what they paid for. Inside to Muye Zinovic. Knocked away by good hustle on Gillette's part. So there you see as Joey Meyer is involved in this game. His team is fighting to stay with Indiana and doing a good job of it. One way of guarding Muljuzinovic inside is you've got to stay on your feet, especially if you have some height. He's, he doesn't jump very high. He's a guy that wants to use shot fakes and get into you. Wilkerson way outside with a three, and DePaul gets it on the out-of-bounds. Indiana continues to struggle against the zone defense. They've got to get better ball movement. They've got to get better penetration. The guard cannot just stand on top and be a passer. He has got to get into the teeth of the defense and then pass out for the open shot. Watts, Wilkerson down in good defensive position. Really a small lineup, but a very potent lineup for DePaul with Watts, Gay, and Patton all in there. All three can shoot the basketball, and all three can dribble, dribble drive. Four points for Watts as he loves going with that left hand. Charlie Miller loses that ball, so DePaul has it on the turnover. A chance for them to get their first lead of the game as they trail by one. And Joey Meyer anticipates this trip down the floor to see if the Blue Demons can in fact accomplish that. Watts with his hands on the ball seems to be the best offense for DePaul. Not only scoring but dishing it off. Here's Gillette cuts through a trap but Indiana comes away with the board. Good block out by Muya Zinovich right there. See, they're putting a lot of pressure. Gay comes in the game and he really adds a lot to this team. It's very aggressive. 
Cross court. Shot fake and a pass finds Harris. Muye Zinovich open all alone. Good look by Evans. Good shot fakes by Brian Evans to get the zone off their feet, out of position. Harris Muyazinovich does a nice job of positioning himself. He's got wonderful hands. He doesn't have a lot of athletic ability as far as jumping and running, but he's got great hands inside. Going to call hold on Sharon Wilkinson against Patton. He knows he's got to stay with him and call for the foul. We've got timeout, 7.35 left. It's Indiana 21. DePaul 18, and we'll be back after these messages. Yeah, life's competitive, all right. Win or lose, doesn't matter. It's how you look at the finish line. Get there first. There's a lot of shoes in this wall. Better let me help you. After all, I'm always going to be waiting on you at the finish line. Get there first. Some people think that here at McQuick's Oil Lube, all we do is lube their car's chassis and drain and replace their old oil with quality Quaker State motor oil. That is part of what we do. But our full service includes a lot more, like checking and filling the transmission fluid. Because when the fluid level gets too low, you could end up with some pretty costly repairs. And be sure to ask about the Quaker State 250,000 mile 10-year guarantee. Quality products and fast, efficient service. You get it all at McQuick's. So before you have to fix it, McQuick's it. Former IU star, John Laskowski. When I needed a second MRI, I was concerned. My first MRI took an hour. I was stuffed in a tube, cramped, and man, was it noisy. Luckily, now there's open-sided MRI, a roomy, quiet, comfortable procedure with no sedation. Open-sided MRI, a much better way. Have your doctor refer you to open-sided MRI for the large and claustrophobic and for children. Call for information when you need an MRI. Open-sided is a better way. Back in Bloomington, Indiana, where Indiana leads 21 to 18 over to Paul. You can see Neil Reed gets into the defense right here. Charlie Miller sets up, and he's ready to shoot the basketball when he catches it. Against the zone, you've got to get your feet set and be ready once you catch the basketball. And that was our finish line replay of the game. DePaul has it now. Down by three. And again, the ball in Watts' hands. See the three-point field goals. Indiana, three of seven. DePaul only one of four. And really, uh, DePaul, the team that really looks for the three-pointer more, more often than Indiana. Bowden is back in the game. Misses on that jumper. So he's got to be careful with two fouls. Good play that time by Curry as he slaps the ball off of Patterson. Bowden just a little bit out of his range right there. Stepped out to about 18 feet. He's a guy, as we mentioned, likes to take that 12 to 15 footer. Watts really likes to go right. He's got a nice job of penetration, dropping it off to Bowden. Not able to get his hands on it clean. Patterson another big rebound. Good pressure outside by Watts. And again, an offensive foul. He's got the hook on his mind tonight. The same officials made the call twice. Twice with the man facing the basket. He's called a hook. Uh, strange goal. On Wilkerson for Indiana. He was being guarded by Watts. That's twice now. Watts is good block out by Brian Evans. Nice. Gay goes up, leaves the jump shot short so many times. The dunk shot by Patterson we've seen recently. This time he didn't take enough dribbles. Well, I think that's it Indiana's eighth turnover. Shows you his athletic ability. He's got to put the ball on the floor one time right there, but uh, pretty impressive to catch it and put it down like he did right there. You see a lot of hesitation dribble in Watts. He really does a nice job of setting the defense up and then just using a hesitation going around. Bowden with the jump hook, and Evans has it. A hold this time as Gay tried to come up to put the pressure on. Coach Knight reaches to the sky saying it's about time. As, uh, Gay has been, been very, very aggressive defensively. Now, if Gay's smart right here, he'll back off just a little bit. He knows the officials are watching him. He goes right back out there. He'll, he'll get another one real quick. 21-18, Indiana by three. Just over six minutes left. Indiana's only scored two points. 
this in the last three and a half minutes. This match inside by Evans, but nice job by Watts coming back in and helping Patton, and Patton all the way to the basket, uses his right hand. Excellent offense by DePaul, getting back before Indiana can get set up. Seven for Patton, and that's what DePaul wants to do, is get the ball up quickly and get the shot. One point ball game. Pass is stolen by Watts, it's two on no one. Watts takes it in, Patterson with the block, and it's a clean one. What a play by Patterson. An excellent effort more than anything by just running the basketball for an excellent pass by Evans inside to Mujuzinovic, who finishes it off with an easy layup, all set up by a big, great hustle play by Andre Patterson on the other end of the floor. And Joey Meyer wants a 20-second timeout. A big play that looked like DePaul would take the lead as Watts was all alone in the layup. But the block by Patterson and in the basket by Muyuzinovic now stretches Indiana's lead to three, so Joey Meyer wanted that timeout. You can see Watts, he gets in a position, he realizes Patterson's there, and he knows he's going to go up for the block. Gets him with a little bit of body right there. They could have got a foul on Patterson, but he he blocks it off of the board. You can see Evans comes in, watch Muyuzinovic down low, get position, hold his position. Evans feeds it right where he can catch it, do nothing but catch it and lay it in. Excellent offense, great look by Brian Evans. Good look at Patterson. He had 11 points and 10 rebounds into the ball game, or in the uh, Evansville game. And it looks like he's coming on strong again this afternoon in the rebound department. This is play number three held up by Watts. Let's see what the Blue Demons do as Wilkerson gets ready to check back in. He'll read in for Indiana. Here's Gaines on the baseline. It's off. Luya Zinovich there for the board. DeMarcus Gaines, 6'5 freshman, his first time in the game. And now Reed leads Indiana from the point. You see the matchup zone. The two guards will match up outside. It's almost a 1-1-3 a one, one, type of setup right now. And they've got the people down low. As Charlie Miller drives the baseline, goes up, gets the roll, and Ted Hillary's got a foul. A lot of talk in practice these last two weeks for Indiana was how to get Charlie Miller involved in the offense. He's been taking that three-point shot when he's open, and he can also be deadly on that drive this time to the left chance for three-point play i don't think the coaches can do a lot more than they've already done as far as getting him involved i think he has to get himself involved he has to come to the game ready to play and understand that the offense is set up and he's got to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there the last couple games he's been looking for the shot opportunities and because of it he's helped indiana offensively and 11 first half points for charlie miller as he comes out coach dan dockage there with some encouragement so Indiana's built its lead now to six. 4.40 left, first half. You see Watts, he has the ball in his hands a lot. He really likes to lean in offensively. You see DePaul going to the board very, very hard. And I, just, I think Watts tipped his own shot in right there. It was, Damon Watts, a good leaping ability there. He's got six points. I say a 1-1-3, one, one, but you come down and they set up. You can see Patton comes out front. Watts is behind him. And then they got three guys along the baseline. A long jumper by Neil Reed. Great hands by Andre Patterson to come up. As we mentioned the other night in the telecast, the hardest ball to rebound is one that never hits the rim. Patterson was able to. Watts answers quickly at the other end with a three. He's got his ninth point now as he starts to step up his scoring here late first half. Wilkerson is tripped that time as Watts picks up the foul. I wouldn't be surprised in the second half if Indiana doesn't try to pick Watts up and at least slow him down more up about the half court line. Right now they're letting him get way too far in. 28-25, Indiana leads it. And we'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. For families on the go, adventurers in the know, and teams that can suddenly grow, the minivan of choice around here is the Ford Windstar. And with $1,000 cash back when you lease a Windstar, you can save over $46 a month. That's over $46 when you lease a new Windstar with $1,000 cash back. The Ford Windstar, one more reason your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. Number one in America, your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. In competitive or recreational athletics, playing healthy is as important as playing well. St. Vincent Sports Medicine helps keep you playing at your optimal level of performance, whatever your game. 
Last year, St. Vincent treated thousands of players from weekend warriors to professional athletes. For diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation, call the St. Vincent Sports Medicine Physicians at 923-PLAY. St. Vincent Sports Medicine. Play healthy. Look. It's David Bailey, the legend. Why don't you ask him if you can carry his bag? I'm not going to ask him, you ask him. I'm not going to ask him, you ask him. Mr. Bailey, sir, is it okay if we carry your bag for you? Sure, kid. Thanks. Not that bag, man. A Seifert's potato chips. Seifert's. Grab a bag today. You believe that guy? Yeah. He's so cute, yeah. Here in Bloomington, it's Indiana by three, and other scores from around the country. Louisville and Kentucky in the battle of the Bluegrass State. It's early. Wisconsin was a big winner at Madison, as was Illinois as they defeat California. Just under four minutes left, first half. Indiana continuing to try to figure out this zone defense. You can see DePaul very, very active in their zone. Really chasing the basketball, and as we mentioned before, you need to use, use a lot of shot fakes and a lot of ball fakes. Reed had moved off the top of the key to the baseline, and Evans hit him with the pass. Reed finishes it off, but Brian Evans sets it up by getting good penetration into the zone defense and giving Neil Reed the chance and the opportunity to hit the shot. Oden with a good shot. He was double teamed that time on the baseline. His fourth point. Neil Reed, unguarded, takes it right in for a shot. Gillette has the board. It's a four-point game. DePaul has been hovering in that three to six-point range, and now they cut it to two as Gillette hits that jumper. Gay hits the jumper. He's very explosive, very, very quick. Whistle away from the ball, and that's going to go against DePaul as Harris gets knocked down. Here's the new conference. The USA Conference, which DePaul is a member of. They've got three top 25 teams there, Cincinnati, Memphis, and Louisville. They've got, they've got the number one team in the country, in my opinion, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati has went on the road a couple times. Uh, folks, keep your eye out for them. I think Cincinnati is the best team in the country at this point in the season. Harris good on that first free throw. He had a big game against Evansville. People go crazy because he missed his first couple free throws. Uh, the other night at Evansville, he missed a couple. Two in a row. On those two, that's right. He's got six points now. Two great feeds for some layups. Boy, they like to go to Bowden. Boy, what a quick move that time. Let's see. He's called for a travel. Bowden doesn't agree with it. Ted Hillary with that call. That's his fifth turnover for DePaul. You see he's upset right here. You can see Mujuzinovic got a hold of him right there. Could have been, been a foul. I don't really think it was a travel. He hops a little bit, but I don't. I, I, I wouldn't call that a travel. Pretty good move inside by Bowden, a big man. Evans double team. Patterson can hit that shot, decides not to take it. You see Patton is inside on Evans, really chasing. Indiana has got to go into Evans. Evans has got to post up and get the shot off against Patton. There's no way that Patton can guard him right there. Evans on the post. He used his height. He's long on that shot. Zinovic is up, and let's see. Brian Ball Evans went in. Brian Evans grabbed a hold of that rim. That should have been goaltend. They're going to give him the basket. The ball was almost down through the basket, but Joey Meyer is not going to be happy, and I can understand why Brian Evans got his hand on the rim before that ball was through the basket. You can see Joey Meyer very upset. You can see Milja Zinovich, excellent hands right here. He gets banged pretty good, and he goes up, gets the ball in the basket. But right there, Evans popped the basket. He actually grabbed it and brought it down. That should have been goaltending. Milja Zinovich should have been shooting two shots right here. Off on that free throw, Gillette saves it. So the ball still hanging tough, just two minutes left in the first half. That's Gillette hits a three-pointer from the outside, so the Blue Demons are right back in this game. They trail by three. Patton, a very, very hard-nosed type player. You can see he doesn't have near that great pass by 
Patterson inside to Muyuzinovic. The Patton, back to that, he's not near as the height that Evans is, but boy, he's hard-nosed and just plays extremely hard all the time. Watts with the shot, it's off. Indiana comes away with it. But Evans slows it down. And a foul. This time, Watts grabs Muyuzinovic. A bad foul by Watts. Watts very, very important to this team as far as the success of this team and running the basketball team, you just cannot create, you cannot commit fouls like that, especially on the road. It's his second foul. He's got to be careful here in the last minute, 28. Not the time to pick up your third. In fact, Joey Myers take, has taken Bowden out so that he doesn't pick his third up. Harris off on the free throw. So a good foul as it turned out as far as keeping Indiana off the board. Has to be a bit frustrating for Coach Knight. Coach Knight likes to use that, that free throw line to take advantage of other teams. And uh, Muyuzinovic's doing a nice job of being fouled, but he, he, can't do any, he can't make his shots once he gets up there. There's the big fella. He has picked up his third foul. He's been very effective for the Blue Demons inside with his scoring. Gay takes control on the outside. Not a very good shot. That's the type of shot he likes. He likes to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one type play, but against the bigger Brian Evans, he needs to do a little bit better of using his quickness and getting into the defense. Oh, good steal there. Anticipation by Watts. And this time he goes up for the jam. Oh, what a player this Watts is. Only a sophomore. Got a lot of Damon Stoudemire in him. And of course, Stoudemire playing very well in the NBA his first year. But Watts is quick. He can shoot, drive. He really does it all. Plays defense. It's got to be a foul on Patton. He is all over Evans right there. He's banging him very hard. Evans continues to, uh, to move up and down the floor. Charlie Miller misses on the shot. And the rebound goes off his hand. So 27 seconds left. The ball is down three points. Now a chance that possibly tie this game before the half. Shot clock is off. And they will take the last shot. You need to take a look at Watts. He kind of almost rocks you to sleep. He just kind of walks it up the floor and then bang, he's all of a sudden around you and to the basket. That's what we talk about using the hesitation dribble and using it, you know, working at different speeds is so important in, when you're playing basketball. Here's Gay with a good draw and he's got the basket. And it's just before the horn, a long shot by Miller is off and so DePaul makes a big run here at the close of the first half to trail by only one it's Indiana 37 DePaul 36 as the teams regroup here at halftime we'll be back after this in the everyday world you go through a lot to make that meeting With the world-class network from GTE, Everything ready? You, bet. you simply go down the hall. Margaret, hi, how are you? Jane, Change the way hi. you work. You cut your hair. Change the way yes. you live. It's amazing <laughs> what you can do with the world-class network from GTE. Around here, people drive Ford trucks. Like the tough, dependable F-150. With a standard driver's airbag. Welded bolted cargo box. Double galvanized steel to prevent corrosion and your choice of powerful, economical, and durable engines. No wonder F-150's been the best-selling truck 19 straight years. Ford F-150, another reason your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. Your Indiana Ford dealer's the one. The game's on. The defending Big Ten champion Boilermakers head to the Big East to do battle with those scurvy pirates from Seton Hall. The game's on Saturday night at 8 on TTV4, Indiana Sports Station. Brought to you by the friendly Dodge dealer near you. This is John Laskowski. TTV4 is now on the net. Email your questions about the IU game right now. Hitch and I will answer some of them on the Union Federal Wrap-Up Show coming up after the game on TTV4, Indiana Sports Station. You don't need to tell me I work hard. I know I work hard. Farming is a hard business. You don't need to show me a picture-perfect soybean field. No field is perfect as much as I'd like them to be. I don't need you to tell me we've entered a new era in farming. Things change, but it's still performance that counts. What I need is a herbicide that works all season. On my 
toughest weeds and grasses in one shot in any field. Just give me what I need. Okay, troops, help me out here. Just what are those ten lords a leaping for anyway? What else, baby? It's that one of a kind steam grill taste. Leap away, boys, and get into White Castle, baby. Because right now, when you snag a second ten, you can also snag a swanky holiday gift sack, too. Just 49 cents with any purchase. Hey, now, what makes those three hens French anyway? Perhaps the way we kiss. <laughs> Easy, girls. White Castle, what you crave. Halftime in Bloomington as Indiana has a one-point lead over a Blue Demon team that really made a good run back. Uh, John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell here from Bloomington. I'll tell you, this is a game where two different styles of play. DePaul bringing it up, scoring quickly, trying to shoot quickly. Indiana likes the more pattern play, and DePaul's really made this a great game. I think DePaul definitely has the momentum. They're running the offense that they want to run, coming down, attacking the defense very quick, getting a lot of good three-point opportunities, and also getting to the basket. Indiana uh, almost looks like they're asleep offensively. They don't know how to attack the 2-3 zone, and they've had some real problems. All right, let's take a look now at the auto zone. First half highlights. You can see for DePaul, they're looking for the last second shot right here. Good penetration, which is what they want by Gay. Watch Mojozinovic. He needs to step in there and take the charge. Instead, he backs off, and Gay says, thank you very much. I'll take that easy layup. For Indiana, you can see some good offense inside. Evans going to pass it over to Andre Patterson. Makes a good drive, shot fake, draws the defense to him. Mojozinovic very good at finding open spots in the defense. Let's take a look now at our Fueling Factors recap. The important points that we thought would come to play in the game, Ted. For Indiana, stopping conversion and penetration. We put the two terms together, and so far, they have been the two most important terms out there in that DePaul continues to run the ball up the, up the floor, whether it's a missed shot or a made shot, and try to get a quick look at the basket. And so far, they've been very, very good, getting some opportunities uh, for the three-point and, and penetrating all the way to the basket, as Gay did on the last play of the game, or the half. Uh, Indiana's value of each possession. They had two or three unforced turnovers as far as unforced errors, which I call them, where uh, the defense really doesn't force the force the air, and Indiana has got to do a better job of handling the basketball. For DePaul, I think they're doing an excellent job of using their athletic ability, running the ball up the floor. And inside game, Bowden in a little bit of foul trouble, but when he's been in there, he's been a real problem. Indiana not able to handle him inside. We'll be back with more halftime after these messages from your local station. In Denton, Texas, a lot of folks who work on their cars go to AutoZone because they know they're going to find quality parts, low prices, great selection, and good people like Tom Robinson. You see, Tom's the kind of guy who really likes to help folks out. And since he's been around cars most all his life, he knows his parts, too. Oh, sure, there are other parts stores in town, but when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice from folks like Tom, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Boston Market introduces Hearth Honey Hams for the holidays. Questions, anyone? Do you use the finest boneless ham? Oh, yeah. Are you blending the honey with cinnamon and cloves? Does the glaze bake up sweet and crunchy? The ham is real tender and juicy, right? Well, then who needs us? Yeah! New Hearth Honey Hams. Order one now for the holidays from your nearby Boston Market. Whether it's basketball or business, it's a good offense that keeps you in the game. But a good defense is what wins it for you. Hi, Damon Bailey from Federated Insurance. One of the best defensive moves a business owner can make is a good risk control program. Federated's Risk Control Plus program helps identify key hazards and risks to your business so you can build a solid defense against loss. Your local Federated representative can tell you more about Risk Control Plus. Give them a call and start building the best possible insurance protection for your business. Call your local Federated representative today. Welcome back to Assembly Hall with the score Indiana 37, DePaul 36. We'll have more halftime activities for you. But first, here's a word from Indiana University. Hey, Socrates, life's a battlefield, and college ought to be boot camp. Listen up. Look at me. I never wasted time on big ideas. No college professor ever changed my life. Hey, look at me. 
Look at me. When I went to school, I never wasted time with any books. I don't have to study all sides of an issue. I know what's right and wrong. Hey, Junior, listen up. I don't jack around. You listen to me. These days, it takes college kids five, six years to graduate. And for what? Six years for what? What? Are you listening? Are you listening to me? And I turned out fine. I turned out just fine. Interviewing for a job anywhere in the world, anytime. That story today on IU Update. Everyone, this is the Arts and Sciences Placement Office. Students come here for counseling and to look for a job that will start them out in life. One tool that can help them land that first job is a computer, and it's now being used in ways we used to only dream about. Ramon Lipscomb is an anthropology major about to take part in a job interview. Ramon is in Bloomington, but the recruiter is in Cincinnati. Their interview will be a live, face-to-face -face meeting via computer. Thanks for coming in this morning. I appreciate your time. All right, Ms. Bellino. Uh, why don't I begin by... Using a new system time. called Interview, students can undertake job searches with companies potentially around the world. Not only is the interview live, the student's resume can be put on the screen and either person can electronically highlight or mark the document. Ms. Bellino, as you can see, I've highlighted on my resume uh, my honors as well as my activities. As you can see, this uh, video conferencing uh, unit is located in the IU Arts and Sciences Placement Office. It was donated by Procter & Gamble. The company has spent $100,000 donating units like this to 35 different colleges and universities. By the time I leave my office and get to the airport, board the plane and take off, I could have interviewed people in Boston, Los Angeles, and Chicago using the ViewNet system. That's a tremendous efficiency for me and for the student as well. Anthropology. Technology like this is yet another link between Indiana University and the business world IU graduates will soon enter. Indiana University has left its mark on Hoosier history, literally. Indiana's first state constitution was recently restored on the Bloomington campus at the Lilly Library. The work was done by conservator James Canary. It took him two months to take the document apart, clean its pages, and put it back together. Because of the irreplaceable value of the Constitution, Canary's restoration work was kept secret until the document was ready to be returned to the State Library under State Police Guard. Finally today, IUPUI faculty and students helped first and second grade teachers welcome new students to school this year. A special program in the School of Social Work helps teachers, parents, and students get acquainted before school starts in the fall. Activities like this are compatible with a mission uh, of the school and of the university, which is service. Education is indeed service. That's all the time we have this afternoon. Reporting for IU Update, I'm Sandy mathis Rowe. Indiana, we're all for you. Conference, celebrating 100 years of athletic and academic excellence. With the score, Indiana 37, DePaul 36. We'll be back with more of our halftime after this. Holiday bonuses in the air. Holiday bonuses everywhere. Bright faces are all
the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite. Life is good. Do you like my new hat? <laughs> Kozak drops back to pass. Jones is open in the end Rose zone. it to Jones to drop the ball. Bad call. Jim of Yep. Yeah. Both teams now warming up for second half. Give us a chance to look at the Citizens Insurance halftime stats. I think DePaul has to be very happy with the stats. Indiana's shooting 50%, yet only has a one-point lead. You can see Indiana not very good at the free throw line because Mujuzinovic, three-point field goals. Again, Indiana shooting four of nine, which is outstanding for them. Rebounding, Indiana does have a big edge, but turnovers, very, very important. They only had 11 at Evansville the other night, and you see they've already got 11 in the first half. DePaul doing an excellent job handling the basketball with only five. Let's take a look now at uh, Jermaine Watts. He had a great first half. Here's a steal. See, nice anticipation right there. He sees Evans going to make the play. Earlier, he gets that shot blocked, so he makes sure that one goes down. And those are the Citizens Insurance halftime stats. Citizens Insurance Company of America. There's a Citizens Independent Agent near you. And we'll be back with second half action after these messages from your local station. There's a wonderful bedrock of strength in the citizens of the great state of Indiana, composed of connectedness, friendship, loyalty, kinship. While some might say these values are old-fashioned, Citizens Insurance holds them in high esteem. A respect for lasting relationships keeps our customers loyal and has made us financially strong, able to offer our customers home, auto, and business insurance at fair and honest prices. At Citizens, our friendship is our bond, just like the good citizens of Indiana. Okay, troops, help me out here. Just what are those 10 lords a-leaping for anyway? What else, baby? It's that one-of-a-kind steam grill taste. Leap away, boys, and get into White Castle, baby. Because right now, when you snag a second 10, you can also snag a swanky holiday gift sack, too. Just 49 cents with any purchase. Hey, now, what makes those three hens French anyway? Perhaps the way we kiss. <laughs> Easy, girls. White Castle, what you crave. The end is the Christmas gift buying is almost over, but Value City gives you 13 more hours to save on everything you need. The first 200 customers get an additional 20% off all purchases on top of our 40 to 70% everyday savings. Tomorrow from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m., you can save up to 85% throughout our store. Plus, all day, take an additional 30 and 50% off our everyday low prices on thousands of gift items. You've only got one day to save on Christmas gifts. Do it at Value City Department Store. It's the Dodge year-end event, and we've got very special deals on select new Dodge cars and trucks, like up to $3,000 off, or financing as low as 1.9%, or lease rates as low as $1.99 a month. So if you've been waiting to visit your friendly Dodge dealer, now's the time to go. The Christmas spirit in Bloomington, the pom-pom girls here cheering on the Hoosiers. The students, of course, off from classes. And here's your leading scorers first half. You see Charlie Miller led the Hoosiers with 11. Harris Mujuzinovic off the bench with 10. For DePaul, no big surprise, Jermaine Watts leads them with 12. Indiana has possession. Well, they like to go to Evans. First time down the floor in each half. He's got the shot but missed it. Here's Watts quickly up. Running jumper in the lane is off. Offensive rebound. Bingo, he'll hit that one. Patton outside does hit it, and DePaul has its first lead of the game. It's by two points. Indiana kind of a, almost asleep right there. DePaul beats him to the basketball on the offensive board. Evans can't seem to get one to fall down. Evans on the pass, and DePaul picks up a foul. We mentioned Wednesday, Ted, in the telecast that 
Indiana really seemed to go out from the start with a look in their eye that they want to control the game. They sure enough did. I don't see that in today's game. I don't think there's any question about it. I think you can tell a lot about this Indiana team the first three, four, five minutes of the basketball game. You can see it's a lot of determination in their eye or kind of a, a glazed look. And tonight, I think you kind of get that glazed look. Nice pass by Evans inside to Mujuzinovic, who's been very effective off the bench for Indiana, but they've kind of got that glazed look. They're not really sure what's going on, and they don't really have that determination and that drive out there that they had against Evansville the other night. A lot of that, I'm sure, has to do with their opponent, uh, DePaul. Very, very good basketball team and has a lot of confidence and uh, came in here with a point to prove. Harris just 36% on his free throws coming into the game. Good look at the junior college transfer. In and out on both of those, so he's 0 for 2. It's almost like a turnover when you get up there and you get two free throws and you come away with nothing. It's almost like throwing the basketball right out of bounds. Outside by Singer. Harris now two out of eight. Three, Going to get the foul on Charlie Miller on the hole. The fall six and three coming into the game. Their losses to Michigan, Texas, and Florida State. Three very good basketball teams. So this is a team whose goal is to win 20 games, win their conference, and go on to the NCAA. And a good-looking team here early in the year. Here's Patton. Oh, good play set up as Curry released off that pick. Evans, got to go up with it right there. He's got to go up with the basketball. Even though a guy's coming in, jumping on him, he's got to get that ball up on the glass. They're going to give him the ball out of bounds when he should be shooting two free throws right there. Andre Patterson has to be more aggressive when he gets the ball in the post. You can see excellent shot fake and feed. Now, he's got to get that ball up on the glass right there. Curry picks up that foul. Here's Harris on the inside. That's going up strong. That's what we talked about going up strong. Getting the ball in the glass right there. He gets hacked really good. The DePaul player comes over, grabs the hold of him, but Harris is big and strong enough to get it up, and fortunately he makes it for Indiana. He'll have a chance at a three-point play. Singer draws that foul. That's his second. Harris doing a nice job for Indiana offensively, stepping up from behind that zone where they can't see him finding the openings and Evans been, been able to find him down inside two or three times. Strong on that one and one. There's not a confident look in the eye of Harris Milozinovic when he goes to the free throw line. 14 fouls already, second half by DePaul. In and out that time as Singer gets that one to fall in and DePaul now regains a three-point lead. Finger is the one forward for DePaul that likes to step out and shoot that three-pointer. Nobody picks up Evans. Evans likes it as well. Tipped that time by Muyuzinovic. I think Muyuzinovic glad that he's able to get it in without being fouled. Watts all the way to the hoop. Can't get the roll. Boy, he really gets in there well, though. As Reed goes around him, it's five on four. Good job by Neil Reed getting the ball inside. Harris misses on the layup, but follows it in. Bowden didn't want to draw that foul. You can see Harris Bowden. Is, excuse me, Bowden really backing off, and I'm sure Joey Meyer's going to tell him, if we're going to stick you in there, you've got to at least de defend. You can't just back off and give guys layups. you at least got to body up against them. And Bowden turns quickly on the shot. Patterson has it. It's Indiana by one. They regain the lead. See, they're in a man-to-man -man out of the missed shot. They like to play the zone. Patterson lost control of the ball, but Evans a heads-up play as he knocked it off Singer. Evans kind of unsure whether whether that ball was going to be off of DePaul or Indiana, so he makes sure. You can see nobody really knows at this point in time. Evans goes up, makes a good play when he throws it off, almost back on top of him right there. You see DePaul back in the man-to-man -man here. Once again, Indiana feels much more comfortable playing against the man defense. You're going to get Gay for a hold on Charlie Miller. You let Gay both back in at that last dead ball. I think this is their most potent lineup for DePaul by far, especially on the offensive end. Gay adds a lot of offense to this team. It's a small lineup, though, with Bowden the only big guy inside. I'm amazed that they try to guard Evans with Patton. 
Miller with the pass from Evans. Evans doing a nice job. He knows that he's really drawing the defense to him. And because of it, there are open people out there. And so far, he's done a nice job of finding them. 13 now for Charlie Miller. Crowd comes to life a little bit. Patton considers the three-point shot. And Gale consider any shot. He likes to score, and he looks to score. Excellent move. Great, great foot movement by the big man inside. Bowden does a nice job of using his feet, spinning inside. And he is a big, strong man, but he does a nice job of moving his feet. Wild pass. Evans fake going in for the lob, and Reed threw it out of bounds. 12 turnovers now, first in the second half by Indiana. Here's Watts again quickly up. And Gay leaves his feet, and a foul as Patterson took the charge. One thing in the, in the Indiana scouting report on Gay is you could draw charges. He likes to get off his feet, get into the middle, look for the charge as Andre Patterson did right there for Indiana. One-point lead by Indiana, 16.03 left, second half. DePaul putting good pressure on Indiana. They went to zone most of the first half. It's been man-to-man -man here in the second half. Bowden with a steal, but Harris comes away with it. Indiana really got it packed down on the... Offensive foul as Harris tried to take it on the dribble. And Patton was right there. Indiana really had it packed out on the baseline right there. No place to move for anybody. 15.46 left. It's Indiana by one. We'll be back after this. Yeah, life's competitive, all right. Win or lose, doesn't matter. It's how you look at the finish line. Get there first. There's a lot of shoes in this wall. Better let me help you. After all, I'm always going to be waiting on you at the finish line. Get there first. It's the Dodge year-end event, and we've got very special deals on select new Dodge cars and trucks. Like up to $3,000 off or financing as low as 1.9%, or lease rates as low as $1.99 a month. So if you've been waiting to visit your friendly Dodge dealer, now's the time to go. At AutoZone, most of our customers are the kind of people who like to work on their cars themselves. That way they save money and they know the work's done right. Of course, when they come to AutoZone, they know they're going to find the right part for the right price. But sometimes, what they're looking for is just a little advice. And that's okay, because we don't put a price tag on it. You see, at AutoZone, we take pride in taking care of our customers. And we've learned that when you treat folks right, they keep coming back. Back in Bloomington, where Indiana leads to Paul 45-44. Let's... Watch Indiana on offense right here. Good movement. You can see Evans doing a lot of moving inside, running Patton all over, does a nice job. Drawing the defense to him, dropping the ball up. Charlie Miller finishes a good job by Indiana right there on the offensive end. Great game as it's a one-point lead now for the Hoosiers. And Jermaine Watts has led this to Paul team and kept him right in the game. Bowden inside. Fouled by Harris. He likes to use that offhand, the hand he's not using to, to uh, deflect the pass, low on the hip. He's been called several times on it this year. And it looks like he's holding the, the offensive man as, a, as he is, and uh, Steve Wilmer all over it right there. Watts hollers out the play, looks over at Joey Meyer in the bench. Watts outside for three, and that's good. Jermaine Watts has done it all for DePaul. 15 points, and now a two-point Blue Demon lead. Patterson goes down. Evans still on the dribble. Found himself a shot. Again, the height advantage over Patterson. 
Not exactly the offense Indiana's looking for. Dribble, 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 take a shot, but uh, they'll take it right there. Oh, big right there's move the there. A quick one by Bout as he gets to the baseline for the jumper, eight points. Now, the Coach Knight is talking to the referee about the hook right there because now that's where you're going to catch the hook is when you got your, got your back to the basket, not out front where Indiana's been called on it twice. The officials don't see it. Nice, nice move by Bowden inside, or Bowden inside. Got to give it back out. There's nothing there. Good double team now. It's one on one. Gay takes it all the way in. Partially deflected. Patterson comes away with it. Brian Evans to pull it back out. This tempo definitely favors DePaul. Reed gives the pass up to Harris. Good, good passing by Indiana, getting back down the floor, beating DePaul back down the floor for one of the few times tonight. 18 now for Muye Zinovich. Watts again from the outside, just off. Rebound to Harris. Now a career high for Muye Zinovich. Evans a double pump, doesn't get it to go. There's Bowden. It's a tie game, 13.25 left. The ball has shown up and come ready to play. Good hands by Neil Reed, able to knock it away. Charlie Miller gives it right back. Charlie Miller has got to come up with the basketball. Neil Reed takes it back again. And the layup by Miller and a foul on Jermaine Watts. Coach Knight extremely upset. Thought Charlie Miller got fouled the first time. Neil Reed comes back, takes it away. Once again, gives it back to Charlie Miller, who have a chance at a three-point play. You can see right here, he goes down. Patton really loses the dribble more than Reed taking it away. Pretty picky foul right there. Charlie Miller just barely gets touched from behind. I think Miller surprised him. He was laying on the ground and reached up with one hand. And I don't think Patton expected him. He knocked it away, and Jermaine picks up his third foul. So a big play there as Indiana gets a two-point lead, and Watts picks up his third. Miller good on the free throw, and Eggers checks in for Patterson. Sixteen now for Charlie Miller. So a big game for him. Three-point Indiana lead. Bowden now out of the game for DePaul. They're trying to go into Curry. I think more importantly, Watts out of the game. They're going to get Robbie Eggers for the foul right there, reaching in. you got to move your feet. You can't play defense with your hands, but you can see Watts, most important, sitting on the bench right now taking a breather. I'm sure you'll see him back in there in just a minute or so. Both average just over 17 points a game. So it looks like this DePaul lineup now wants to take that drive, see if they can force Indiana in in some helping situations to get good shots. Gay will look to be their offense right here. Look for him to, he likes to drive, especially drive to the baseline, whatever side he's on. Singer, a guy that can stick that jumper. Eggers with that board. Sneaking up from behind, Patton nearly slaps it away. Evans a pass fake. Good ball fake right there by Brian Evans. He just continues to come up short. Wilkerson misses. Big battle on the board, and Patton picks up the foul as he tried to steal it from Miller. Took a jog all the way down to the end of the DePaul bench. Let's see it. You can see Patton's hard nose right here. Now watch the end of the play. Welmer's going to get him after the ball comes out right here. Right here, you can see he got him right there. Patton felt like he got up un between the arms and knocked the ball away, and it looked pretty clean right there, but he Steve Wilmer felt like he slapped his arm before he got the ball. 18 fouls now for DePaul, only four for Indiana. Yeah, 18 fouls with uh, almost 13 minutes still left in the basketball game is a lot. Indiana will be going to the free throw line, having a lot of opportunities to shoot free throws here the last... 12, 13 minutes of this basketball game. Great game offensively for Miller. 
Doesn't get the roll there. Good rebound that time by Gillette. Indiana on its goaltending. But no whistle. Not that anybody slapped it off the rim. Coach Knight felt like they got into the net. And if you get into the net and the ball's still on the rim, they'll call goaltending. No such call right there. Four-point lead, Indiana. Here's Gay. It's off, and Eggers has the board. Rebounding has been a strength for Indiana against the smaller Blue Demons. DePaul got to get Watts back in the basketball game right here. Indiana moves out to a six-point lead. You can see Joey Meyer looking for the 20-second timeout. Look for Watts to come right back in the game. Both will check in on this 22nd. This Indiana crowd, over 17,000, is standing, showing their approval as Indiana's up by six. Take a look at the last play down the floor. Nice job by Neil Reed getting to the basket. Good job of passing the basketball, but most importantly, Wilkerson positioning himself in the open position, giving Reed the opportunity to, to give him the pass for the easy layup. DePaul in some foul trouble, and four different players with three each, all key players for the Blue Demons. Watts now back in the basketball game. Joey Meyer just cannot afford to take him out for very long length of time. The entire team, you can see that you see a lot more confidence in the eye of the Blue Demons when Watts is in the game. And this, I think, Ted Kitchell, a very crucial part of the game. Indiana now with a six-point lead. And 11.40, still plenty of time. If DePaul can bring themselves back, it gets them momentum, or they can stay with Indiana. If Indiana stretches this lead, it would really hurt the Blue Demons' chances. Let's see. They go right to the big guy inside, jump hook. Makes it look easy. It is easy right there. Indiana's letting him get the ball. He takes a couple dribbles, he turns, and he just shoots a nice little soft jump hook right there. Indiana have to gonna have to do a better job inside on Boat, and he has uh, made Indiana pay today. Ten points for Boat. Four-point lead, foul away from the ball. And Watts is gonna pick that up, trying to stay with Reed. It is Steve Walmer with that call, so Watts picks his fourth up very quickly. Most important on that play was Neil Reed made an excellent cut. He acted like he was going out, he got Watts moving out, and then he cut back under the basket. Watts' momentum carried him into Robbie Eggers. I don't think it was a real hard foul. He just kind of got caught off balance. His forearm kind of slid up under Robbie Eggers' chin because of it. Steve Walmer gets him for a foul. Watts leads with 15, and... Saw that look on Joy Meyer's face. I really don't want to take Jermaine out, but I've got to. Jermaine Watts, as he walked by the official, you could see he, he felt like the Indiana players are moving on their screens. Eggers is off on the free throw. Indiana continues to shoot a pitiful percentage from the free throw line. Bowden tracks it down. Wilkerson nearly in lane to steal that. Gay with the drive inside. Hits the floater, and it's a two-point game. Six now for Gay. See, Indiana had the six-point lead, and all of a sudden, the last few times down, DePaul able to get to the basket and score, cut that lead. You're going to call him for traveling right there. Fourth, second-half turnover by the Indiana Hoosiers. A two-point lead for Indiana. We'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. It's the Dodge year-end event. And we've got very special deals on select new Dodge cars and trucks. Like up to $3,000 off. Or financing as low as 1.9%. Or lease rates as low as $1.99 a month. So if you've been waiting to visit your friendly Dodge dealer, now's the time to go. If you're going to be the best, you've got to be committed to excellence. And at Marsh, we've been making that commitment for over 60 years. you got to work hard on all the fundamentals because that's what's going to make you better. And we're working to give you the highest quality and the best service at great values. And when we've got the right players in the right positions, it means only one thing. A winning tradition. Marsh, an Indiana tradition. Marsh will bring a smile to anyone's face, even mine. One of the most remarkable innovations in healthcare is found right here in Indiana, the St. Vincent Community Health Network. More doctors have chosen the St. Vincent Community Health Network as their partner. With five full-service hospitals and more outpatient and immediate care centers, you get more choices, more locations, more doctors, which is why more employers and employees are choosing health plans anchored by St. Vincent and community hospitals. 
The St. Vincent Community Health Network. We are where you are. Almost halfway through the second half here in Bloomington. Indiana leads by two over DePaul. Here's a matter of Eggers getting around. You got him. No, I got him. You got him. You, you, who's got him? Nobody's got him. And because of it, it's an easy two points for Gay and DePaul. Nice job of penetrating the lane. Something Indiana's had a hard time defending all year. Indiana with the big numbers on turnovers. Finger will take that. He'll step up and take that at any time. Strong on that shot, and Reed has it. What a surprise here to Paul has went back to the man-to-man -man defense almost the entire second half where they were very good in the, the zone defense early as Andre Patterson takes the jump shot, goes up over the bank. Indiana taking quick shots, not a lot of passes. Maybe the tempo that uh, favors the DePaul Blue Demons more than it does the Hoosiers. DePaul comes down with 10 minutes to go in the second half with a chance to tie or take the lead. Stack on one side, now they break off that. Let's see, Bowden's going to step out and he's going to go down a down screen for Patton looking to, for him to come off and take that jump shot. Good right move. there. That's what you can't right do down. right there. You're going to go for the three-point play. You can't let that guard split you. Patton did it with the right hand, too. Joe and Meyer pleased as we've got a tie game and Patton is going to be at the line. Excellent play by Patton. Watch him. They set the screen right here. The two defenders, that's the way you beat it. You go right between them. Wilkerson not there in time. Patton gets the roll and he'll have the chance for a three-point play. 72% shooter from the line. The foul on Wilkerson. Patton above his average. But long on that free throw. Indiana finally gathers possession. And this crowd's getting a little restless. High score. The ball has been in the game for the entire game, keeping it close. Wilkerson, a shot there as he scooped that one up and got it to go, his fourth point. Something DePaul's been doing to Indiana all day, continuing to penetrate. Wilkerson gives them a little shot of their own medicine right there, penetrating the lane for the easy layup. High pick as Gay takes it all the way inside. Shot is off. Evans gonna bring it down, and Gay nearly stole it from behind. Reed ready for three. Good block out by Bowden right there. Andre Patterson going hard to the hard to the board. Patton takes a quick three and he's got it. And uh, Paul now has a one point lead. Indiana's defense kind of drops back into the lane and then comes out. DePaul tries to get down very quick so they can catch him before they get back out. That time Patton able to take the easy three pointer. Sharon Wilkerson shot off the baseline. And Indiana regains the lead. Patton gives it up just before the shot. And that's Bowden from the outside. Big fella showing some range. Not a lot of defense being played by either team at this point in time, but I think that's kind of the style DePaul likes. They like to get out there, take the shots if available. Hope they, hope they can just shoot a little better percentage than the other team. Easy rebound for Singer. So DePaul now, one point lead, eight minutes remaining, and the ball. Drive that time as Patton loses it. Gay takes off in the middle. Penetration much too easy, just off on the shot. They've been able to penetrate and get to the basket all evening. They're very, very confident they can get in there and get the short, easy shot. DePaul doing a nice job of taking Brian Evans out of the Indiana offense. Here's Miller, great job offensively. Shot fake, nearly got it to go, but he'll get two at the line. First of all, foul. So we talked about Charlie Miller using his athletic ability. He does a nice job at 6'5", of posting up on the, on the lane. Turns quick, good shot fake, and he gets the defender up in the air, and then gets into him, and he a chance at two free throws. See the free throws. Indiana got to the line many more times. We're only five of 14. Now six of 15 at the line. DePaul's only been there three times all evening, successful in all three attempts. 
Good concentration by Miller. Just off, though. He's got 18 points now. Indiana now will get two free throws with each foul. Whereas DePaul is still two shots, two uh, fouls by Indiana away from a one and one. Here's Bowden inside. Oh, I like that fella. He makes a quick move, doesn't dribble a lot. And to give him 14 now for the game. He does a nice job of taking one dribble and getting his body into you. That way you can't jump up and block the shot. And then he just goes up. He's got a very nice touch and he's got wonderful hands once he gets the ball inside. Drive by Wilkerson gets him the layup to tie the score. Wilkerson becoming very much more offensive minded here in the second half. That's about the fourth or fifth shot he's taken in the last three or four minutes. Now is when Indiana needs the defense. Singer outside is good on a three-pointer. Three steps outside that line. I don't think Wilkerson expected that shot. It came. I'm not so sure Joey Meyer that's the shot that he's looking for, but I'm sure he'll take it at this point in time. Reed on the dry. Wilkerson again on the inside as two blue demons are on the floor, and Wilkerson gets his 10. It's a bit quite a game. DePaul still leads it by one. Good control that dribble by Patton. Gillette fakes the three. Patton to his right shoulder again. Boy, his confidence is uh, way up there. As you see him come down the floor, 16 points for Bowden. Three-point lead, six minutes left. Charlie Miller gets free for the layup. So the offense has taken over for both teams here in this game. 20 for Miller. Is it great offense or just terrible defense? I think uh, the okay. offense is pretty good, but I don't think the defense is doing much at this point in time. You guys are getting tired now. Not many substitutions for Indiana in the ball game. The ball's pretty well gone with seven players as well. William Zinovich has got to keep Bowden out of the lane. When he gets up there and he wants to step in the lane, you can, that's the shot you got to let him take, even though he might, he might step out there and hit it. He's not near as effective out there facing the basket as he is five feet with his back, back to the basket. Rui Zinovich inside, goes up, and a foul on Gillette. Bowden did a nice job to keep himself still there with hands straight up. I'm sure Coach Myers thinking this might be as good as a turnover so far, the way Rui Zinovich has been to the line, been, been very poor from the line so far. Take a look here, you can see Bowden, he backs off the lane. Now this is where you want him, even though he can shoot that jump shot out there, he's not near as effective as we mentioned from out there as he has been with his back to the basket. He just gets the ball inside, he takes one dribble and he's just been draining everything he looks at. As you mentioned, Ted, that's why they may want Harris at the line. He's three of 10 now, 30%. I'll tell you, that crowd loves to see that. Off on the second. So it's a tie score, 5-10 left. And Joey Meyer wants to take a timeout and regroup. 5.06 left, 67 all. We'll be back after these messages. In Denton, Texas, a lot of folks who work on their cars go to AutoZone because they know they're going to find quality parts, low prices, great selection, and good people like Tom Robinson. You see, Tom's the kind of guy who really likes to help folks out. And since he's been around cars most all his life, he knows his parts, too. Oh, sure, there are other parts stores in town, but when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice from folks like Tom, there's just no place better than AutoZone. It's the Dodge year-end event. And we've got very special deals on select new Dodge cars and trucks. Like up to $3,000 off. Or financing as low as 1.9%. Or lease rates as low as $1.99 a month. So if you've been waiting to visit your friendly Dodge dealer, now's the time to go. Make the official fuel of NASCAR in a slightly tamer version for your car. 
The Hoosiers will be in Indianapolis next weekend, the Hoosier Classic. They take on Appalachian State in the first game, 6.30 tip-off from Market Square Arena. Hope you can join us for that ball game. Look at some of the Christmas crowd here in Bloomington. Indiana's got quite a home record, as you're aware. They have not lost a non-conference home game in over 10 years. So DePaul, with some better three-point shooting here in the second half, has a chance to snap that streak. They have the ball and a tie game. And Watts back in the basketball game. Look for him to try to get started early. Gillette thought about a three. Well, Gay just bends over well. Left-handed dribble. It got Pat in a shot. There's Bowden. And he follows it right up. So DePaul getting good strength inside from Bowden. 18 points for Bryant. Outside shot by Miller is a three-pointer. And Indiana regains the lead by one. More than anything, I think the Indiana fans just excited to see Charlie Miller stepping up and taking that shot. Ted Hillary looked a little unsure as far as who the ball went off of right there. Neil Reed got no help when he came off that screen. And Watts, as soon as he's in the game, makes himself a presence as he gets to Paul another possession there. Well, Zinovich has got to do a better job on Bowden down in low, and you've got to play defense before he gets the ball. Once he gets the ball inside in there, you're either going to foul him or he's going to score. See Harris trying to front Bowden inside, and Evans trying to help you can see from Indiana, on top. Indiana helping off of Gillette. Gillette has got to get himself into open positions because Indiana looking to help off of him. That's Gay from the outside, Juan Gay with a three-pointer. He likes to drive, but didn't hesitate at all to take that three-pointer, so DePaul back in front by two. And now the Paul back in that 2-3 zone that Indiana has had so, many, so much problem with all day. Just not able to find the openings in it. DePaul does a nice job of moving and getting people open. Neil Reed takes a pass on the baseline and gives Indiana the lead. And Neil Reed steps up and Watts comes right back. Bowden. His confidence has never been higher as he has killed Indiana here in the second half. 20 points on the game. Now DePaul back in the man-to-man -man defense. They're changing defenses on Indiana. He only had four at the half, so 16 for Bowden here in the second half. Indiana looks very, very tired out there. They're not getting a lot of good, sharp streams, and because of it, they're struggling offensively. Evans has been quiet second half. Here's Harris. Dribbles into the hole. Knowing that Bowden doesn't want to pick that foul up, he gets the layup. It's Indiana by one, less than three minutes to go. Bowden's got to do a better job defensively, though. You at least have to get your body in front of Milyuzinovic. He's just given up the layup. You, you at least have to have a presence inside. Watts on the drive. We're going to get Neil Reed with the body. Watts is so quick, going to his right. Second on Reed. And we've got timeout. 2.30 left. It's Indiana by one. We'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. It's the Dodge year-end event, and we've got very special deals on select new Dodge cars and trucks, like up to $3,000 off, or financing as low as 1.9%, or lease rates as low as $1.99 a month. So if you've been waiting to visit your friendly Dodge dealer, now's the time to go. Very hot this Friday and Saturday at Incredible Universe. Very hot. It's our two torrid days of December. It ignites both days at 9 a.m. and burns through 10 p.m. The deals get hotter every hour. And you get no interest for 12 months on everything. 
two torrid days at Incredible Universe. Back in Bloomington, where Indiana leads to Paul 75-74. You can see Mojozinovic, he's going to try to make the move. But watch Bowden, he just, he just gives up right there. You've got to keep your body between the, the player and the basket. You can't just give up the easy layup, as he did right there to Mojozinovic. Big game for the Big Z. Brian Evans has been quiet, though. Only two second-half points. It gives him nine on the night, so... So Paul has shut down Indiana's leading score. Look how Indiana continues to lay off of Gillette right here. And Gillette is the screener. Gay looking for that second three out there. He got one earlier. Oh, good hands that time by Gillette. Kept it alive. Excellent. Excellent. Bowden. Loading shot is in to Paul now with a one-point lead. Full court pressure by Watts. They get into Evans. 22 now for Bowden. 18 here in the second half. Patton makes that play happen, though. He comes up with the loose ball. Dribble penetration. They're going to get Gay on a shoving foul down low. Miller was trying to post up inside. Miller with a big height advantage of about seven inches. No, they're going to get Gillette. They're going to get Gillette with the foul. Let's see, but on the other end, you can see. Now watch Patton. He makes the play, gets the ball, pen dribble penetration. All Bowden has to do is catch it and shoot, shoot the little jump shot. Patton makes that play happen. Miller good on the first, and that's the Union 76th point of the game, and it's Miller's 24th point of the game. Ties the score. And give Indiana the lead by one now. Just under two minutes left. And we've got a good one. Watts has the ball, and that makes it dangerous for Indiana. This is where your defense can win the game for you with under two minutes. See Neil Reed trying to play defense before Watts gets the basketball. Indiana's got to come up with that loose ball. Tough pass right there by Bowden. Nine seconds shot clock. Watts has it outside. They spread the floor. He takes the three. Nothing but net. My goodness. They backed off. Watts took it from way behind the arch. 18 points and a two-point lead for DePaul. Wilkerson on the drive. Shot is blocked from behind by Patton. And DePaul has the two-point lead, 109 left. See, Patton comes up with another big play right there. Watts on the drive, gets help on the baseline, and it loses the ball. Miller comes away with it. Indiana with numbers. Evans, Harris, layup is good. As Harris, Muye Zinovic has been the player of the game offensively for Indiana. A tie game. 48 seconds left, timeout, DePaul. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. After the game, stay tuned for the Union Federal Wrap-Up Show, featuring an inside report from the locker room with coaches Norm Ellenberger and Ron Felling. Then, Laz and Kitch will choose a Subway Super Sub of the game. It's all right after the game on TTV4. Boston Market introduces Heart Honey Hams for the holidays. Questions, anyone? Do you use the finest boneless ham? Oh, yeah. Are you blending the honey with cinnamon and cloves? Does the glaze bake up sweet and crunchy? The ham is real tender and juicy, right? Well, then who needs us? Yeah! New Heart Honey Hams. Order one now for the holidays from your nearby Boston Market. The game's on. The defending Big Ten champion Boilermakers head to the Big East to do battle with those scurvy pirates from Seton Hall. The game's on Saturday night at 8 on TTV4, Indiana Sports Station. Brought to you by the friendly Dodge dealer near you. All right, I got it. Back in Indiana where the score is tied with 48 seconds to go, 79. No, it's not the Bears, it's the Blue Demons. You can see it looks like football out there. You can see Wilkerson goes to the floor right here. DePaul comes to the other end. You see Watts is going to get caught on the baseline. Watts likes to keep that dribble, keep his dribble penetration alive. You can see he tries to go baseline, gets caught. He gets knocked down. Indiana comes up with the ball again. We're going back to the other end. It still looks like football. We give it to Mujozinovic inside. Bang, he knocks one down, gets the roll. Joey Meyer says it's time for a timeout. 
Maybe you should be a football uh, announcer too, Ted. That was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Indiana, very interesting on that last time out by DePaul, the four coaches were separate from the team, discussed different strategy, and then as DePaul timeout ran its course, Indiana called timeout. So now the Indiana coaching staff is in with the players trying to stop DePaul. Now, 48 seconds to go, so they do have to take a shot, 31 on the shot clock. What do you anticipate DePaul's offense to be, Ted? Well, I think you're going to see the same thing you've seen all day. De DePaul's got exactly what you want offensively. They've got their outside game going with Watts and Patton, and then you've got the big man inside, Bowden. If you throw it into him, if you don't collapse on him, he's very confident. He can score the easy layup, the easy turnaround jump hook. If you do collapse on him, Patton's going to find an open spot, as is Watts, and they're going to look to knock down the three-pointer. Indiana goes with Reed and Evans, Saran Wilkerson, Miller, and Muye Zinovic as the Hoosiers come back. DePaul has 10 team fouls, so any foul that they force uh, on Indiana is two free throws, but Indiana with their next foul would put DePaul in the one and one. We'll see if that plays out. They've got Gillette, Watts, Bowden, Patton, and Gay. Team that's very, very offensive minded. And I talk about Watts and Patton looking for the three, but you've got to think about Gay out there also. He will pop it at any time, and he's very, very quick to the basket. High pick for Watts. Gillette, they play off Gillette. He takes the shot, and he nails it 15 feet. DePaul by two, 32 seconds left. Indiana calls timeout. So a big play from Charles Gillette, only averaging three a game. We'll take a timeout, and we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. In the everyday world, it rains. With the world-class network from GTE, it rains too. You just don't get wet. Change the way you work. Change the way you live. It's amazing what you can do with the world-class network from GTE. seconds left. Indiana has used that timeout to diagram an offensive play and they now Bob Knight calls the team back again. A crucial possession for Indiana. We mentioned Evans has been quiet, only two points. Harris Muyazinovich, Indiana's big score is out. And here we go. Andre Patterson back in the game. They're obviously trying to get Evans open for the three. He gets it. Not able to knock it down, and there's Bowden. If you just look up the floor, he had Gay at the other end of the floor for an easy layup. That was a three-pointer by Evans, which would have given Indiana the lead. And a shot that Evans likes. Let's watch that play again. Indiana looking for the three-pointer. You can see Evans go inside. Good screen by Miller and Patterson right there. Evans gets the good look. Not been... Uh, Hasn't been able to find the bottom of the net this afternoon, especially here in the second half for Evans with only nine points, two in the second half. Great defense by DePaul on Brian Evans. So it's a one and one, 65% shooter is Bowden. And he's good with that one. A three point lead for DePaul. As they have refused to give up here second half. And now find themselves in the lead. 19 and a half seconds left. Bowden misses. Three-point lead. So Indiana needs three to send it to overtime. 12 seconds. Looking for Reed or Evans on a three-pointer or Miller. Here's Sharon Wilkerson. Yes! Outside 6.9. Sharon Wilkerson with a three-pointer. Look for Watt. He's going to penetrate. They're going to call time right there. DePaul brought the ball up a little bit before Joey Miller, Joey Meyer called timeout. 13 points, but the biggest three of Sharon's career is he ties the game at 82. Very heads-up play by Sharon Wilkerson. 
the DePaul player really reaches in and gives gives Wilkerson the opportunity right here. Watts is an excellent defensive position. Now he reaches and gives Sharon the opportunity. Comes up from behind. But, but great recognition right there by Sharon to take the opportunity and seize the moment for the three-pointer for Indiana. I mean, that's a game breaker, though. If Watts is able to make that steal and go the other way, the ball game's over. And he's got such a good defensive position right there, though. Indiana al almost looked lost at that point in time, not able to get anybody open. And when he makes that, that jump at the ball, Wilkerson able to spin, and all of a sudden there's a three-point shot available. Wilkerson, a 38% three-point shooter, so he hits his fair share, and none more important than that. So... 5.2 seconds left. The ball will have the ball out about three quarters of the way. Again, it looks like give it to Watts and see what he can create. No doubt about it. They're, they'll get the ball in Watts' hand. Look for Indiana to try to keep the ball out of Watts' hands. Look at him to defend him very, very hard on the inbounds play. They'll pick up probably at half court. You see Neil Reed going up to pick up Watts right away. Going to try to take as much time as possible off of the clock before they can get the shot. Full court pressure by Indiana with Neil Reed picking up the assignment on Watts. That leaves Gay open, but they go to Watts. Crosses the 10 second line. Gillette is open. Shot is good at the buzzer. And that's going to do it. DePaul has won the game. 84 82. As Charles Gillette hit two big buckets. Closing. Look at the Blue Demons on the floor. Coach Bob Knight. Some congratulations to Coach Joey Meyer. But these Blue Demons have come to Bloomington and upset the Hoosiers 84-82. A very unlikely hero in Charles Gillette. A jump hook from about five feet on the baseline right as the horn sound, not giving Indiana a chance to regroup. He stepped up and hit two big shots late in the game. Gillette, you can remember earlier, got the ball at the free throw line, took one dribble in and hit that at very important jump shot. And then right there, they, DePaul knew that Indiana would be keen on the, the three scores along with Bowden outside. So Gillette able to pop into the opening, got the little jump hook and knocked it down for a big game winner. There's a smile on Ray Meyer's face. And by the way, this is his 1,422nd consecutive DePaul game. He hasn't missed a game since 1942. Let's watch that last play. And here it comes. You can see good penetration right here, but nobody picks up Gillette. Patterson comes over. Over just a little bit late tries to get the block but it's already in the basket one more look you can see Gillette looking for the opening on the floor finds it down on the low block nice little shot right there the biggest one of his career I'm sure by far the jubilant Blue Demons celebrate our two-point victory in Bloomington we'll be back with more after these local Snake Burger of the Future! So, what did you get me? 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 Gift certificates what did you get me? from Steak and Shake. Famous for Steak Burgers. If you're going to be the best, you've got to be committed to excellence. And at Marsh. We've been making that commitment for over 60 years. You gotta work hard on all the fundamentals because that's what's gonna make you better. And we're working to give you the highest quality and the best service at great values. And when we've got the right players in the right positions, it means only one thing. A winning tradition. Marsh, an Indiana tradition. Marsh will bring a smile to anyone's face, even mine. From Bloomington, it's 84-82. The DePaul Blue Demons move their record to 7-3. and three. Indiana evens it out now at 5-5, five and five. and I think this crowd leaves a little stunned after uh, a 10-year streak of not losing a non-conference home game. DePaul comes away with a big victory at the end, and it's a matter of penetration, especially in the second half, Ted, where DePaul was able to bring the ball in and create offense. And, and I think... Uh, uh, you know, also a lot of determination on on DePaul's part. Uh, Patton was a guy that just continued to grind and grind and play hard and knock the loose balls away and come up with them. And he continued to do an excellent job for DePaul. And uh, DePaul's determination in the end paid off. 
I, th I think not only the crowd is a little stunned, but I think uh, as you watch the players walk off the floor, I think they were uh, a little stunned as Santa delivered a little coal in their sock this afternoon. Saron Wilkerson came on well in the second half. You see him make the big three-point shot there, and uh, only a sophomore after having missed that year with a uh, broken leg came back with a big play. Now let's watch Reed. You can see Brian Evans. This is the three-pointer earlier that they try to come up with. You can see Neil Reed goes in and fouls Bowden right away. Big play there as uh, Bowden only made one of those two free throws. And then that set up the out-of-bounds play with five seconds left. And Watts very unselfishly goes to Gillette. So Patterson gave some pretty good help there as Gillette had to shoot that high archer. And there you see the Blue Demon bench come away with the uh, celebration as they begin to celebrate. There was but, excellent patience by DePaul because you very easily could have, you know, come down and just fired up a three, which I think Indiana felt like they were going to do. Evans runs out at Watts, and because of it, uh, Watts, very patient, takes his time, gives the ball to Gillette, and there was only about five-tenths of a second when the ball leaves Gillette's hands. All right, we'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. Holiday bonuses in the air. Holiday bonuses at everywhere. Bright faces are all a glowing. $20,000 could be showing. May all your hopes and dreams come. This holiday wishes for you. Holiday bonuses in the air. Season's greetings from the lottery to you. Indiana loses by two, and Ted, this was a week where Indiana was to play 80 minutes of basketball. They did 40 against Evansville, but against a strong Blue Demon team, sends them home a little blue for the holidays. Well, I think Coach Knight has to be disappointed probably most of all that uh, he just didn't have that same team walk on the floor tonight that walked on in Evansville. Obviously, a, a DePaul team with, with, with much more athletic ability than Evansville, but IU had a real determined look in their eye when they walked on the court the other day. Tonight, they, they, they seemed, as I mentioned earlier, have that glazed look. Uh, they, they are out there. They're out there to play. Uh, they score a few points. They do some things, but they just never were out there to just, you know, by golly, just take that game away from, from DePaul. And uh, the look that Patton really had in his face tonight, I thought Patton came out, really did an excellent job, and he was one of the main reasons that DePaul was able to win this game. All right, Indiana tries to regroup, and that gives us a chance to let you know our next telecast on Creative will be next Friday as Indiana takes on the Mountaineers from Appalachian State. Join us live from Market Square Arena in Indianapolis for Game 1 of the Hoosier Classic next Friday. For Ted Kitchell, it's John Laskowski. Good night from Bloomington. Today's Indiana basketball action has been brought to you by the friendly Dodge dealer near you. 76 Gasoline, American Cyanamid, and Squadron Herbicide, St. Vincent Community Health Network, and your Indiana Ford dealers. In the everyday world, you go through a lot to make that meeting. From the preseason games and the Indiana Classic right through the Big Ten season and the NCAA Tournament, watch Bob Knight and the Hoosiers right here on News Channel 15. Current conditions in Fort Wayne from News Channel 15, your local weather station. Tonight on Murder, She Wrote. I am... Jack Breslin 
center, and East Lansing, Michigan, it's Big Ten basketball. Tonight, the opener in the league for the Indiana Hoosiers and Michigan State Spartans. Good evening, everybody, along with Greg Kelser. I'm Tim Stout. Welcome to the Jack Breslin Center. This is the Big Ten opener for two teams who struggled in November and December. Bob Knight's 28-18 and 18 against Michigan State. He's looking to get up to a good start tonight, Greg Kelser. Michigan State really needs an upper with a win here tonight. Well, as you said, both teams have struggled, but the problem for Michigan State, Indiana struggled against the likes of UConn, Kentucky, and Kansas, and Michigan State has struggled against Detroit and Central Michigan. They're looking for improved play out of their backcourt. They'll need it if they're to compete in the Big Ten season. Michigan State hoping for a good game. What about the Hoosiers? Let's go to Indiana broadcasters Ted Kitchell and John Laskowski. Guys, thanks, Tim. Time now for the Coquiline Fueling Factor. And for Indiana, rebounding going to be very, very important. Michigan State out-rebounding their opponents by almost 11 a game. Winning on the Big Ten Road, Iowa, Illinois found it very, very difficult last night. For Michigan State, turnovers, very, very important. They've got to get good guard play. Right now, they're averaging 17 turnovers, only forcing 11. An inside game. It's been a little inconsistent along with their guard play. They've got to get good, strong play from Jamie Fike inside. Those are the fueling factors for tonight's game. Coakley's fueling factor is their 100% guarantee of high-quality fuel. For over 57 years of family pride makes a difference. And now back to Tim Stout. Tonight's Big Ten game is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealers. By Harness Extra Herbicide, the herbicide that is as dependable as you are. By Car